a sport we play. And now we get some taro growing. I tell the people why taro is so wonderful. Taro, we can make um, lao lao, and with the root, we can make poi, and kalo, and all that good stuff. See how pretty it is? Now, do you wear those in your hair? No, we don't use those. We use plumerias in our hair. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Um, right there. Here we got one. That's nice, pretty. Hold that next to your hair. Oh, it's so beautiful, friend. Hmm. This is. That's what I hold. The morning of the accident was February 26, 1992, and I was at work. I went in early. Well, I always go early to work, and I was there, and I had a coworker, and we were sitting down talking. And the phones, our, our office is very busy, so the phone started ringing. And I asked him not to answer the phone. I said, don't answer it because we never, we hadn't been talking for a long time. And we needed to coordinate some stuff. And the phone rang off the hook. And he said, you know what, I got to get it. So he picked it up, and then he said, you should take it. And it was my mom. My mom told me that Odie had been hit by a car. I thought she was, you know, like, this is not real. This is really not real. I was sitting at work, and I just fell apart totally, really unbelievable so I had my my whole family had gotten to the hospital and one of my sister-in-laws who was there for my first child's death she said it's not gonna happen to you again it cannot happen twice but the doctor said it it just might the pressure in the brain was just overloaded they had to take her into surgery and um, they were really professional and I like that about them they really were because they didn't give us any false hope and I know how that is because of the first child that I lost. And it's really important not to give false hope. You know, you have to be upfront, but be honest. If, you know, that was the most important thing. And I think I had really good doctors. Um, so we, ha we, we went through, it was the first, it's the first 12 hours, then it's the first 36 hours and then it's the first 48 hours and they keep moving them back that's really cool about these doctors you know <laughs> she's made it through <laughs> this much you just gotta wait so many more hours so we got through that she was on life support um, and then you know other people really they they encourage you but there is really, really for Odie was not no there was no way to encourage you she was on life support that was what keep what kept the child alive and in, coma. Yeah. in coma total coma nothing we had nothing um, and she wasn't even breathing she had her both lungs collapsed so we didn't know if there was any neck injury and at this point I guess we really couldn't care about that because that was not breathing I guess was the most important we stayed at Queens for 30 days on March 18th that was Odie's birthday and this ICU unit there I tell you, tell you they're awesome yeah when when I was I was sleeping out in the Queens medical if anybody's familiar with it on they have little couches out there thank God for the couches that's where I slept for 30 days so they got up early or they're up early and they changed Oli all up and they t pulled the plug they pulled the plug on her birthday the venerable. yep yep and let her breathe on her own so that was the first sign of her getting to manage for herself she's recognizing be uh, about two weeks into California she knew who I was okay she she's Awake yeah so she would say ma you know so she she knew who I was and then she was coming where she you know she'd get angry so she was we got her in a wheelchair now so when she's sitting down we, I had to write letters while I was in the hospital didn't have any computer to my 
but I'd write letters and I'd because what they were doing is she was in a bed but she should have been in a box because traumatic brain injury is really something yeah you got to really know about it because they do a lot of agitation agitation okay that's the right word and they just had her in a bed with posts okay so that was very very dangerous for her and they had no way of keeping this jerking body right so the nurses but the nurses are not familiar that's really sad the nurses are not familiar with traumatic brain injury so when I saw when I first came and I saw her really sitting up I said oh my god oh my god we've got the baby s this far and now she's gonna fall out of bed you know and so they said well no no we can't do anything about it so I so I wrote a letter and I say I want it in writing I want reassurance that my child is going to not fall out of this bed. I didn't know what else to do. I knew she was going to fall out of bed. So I took it down to the doctor, the physician that was hers, and I said, could you please sign this? Because I just want to be reassured. And in the meantime, I said, my husband, do not leave her aside. Let me go coordinate this. Went downstairs. And he says, I can't do that. They should, they should have, there was a bed, but they couldn't get the bed up to the floor that she was supposed to be on. So now, the, the, now my choice was if you can't, we can put her in the bed that she should be in because they have a bed specially made for trauma victims, but she would have to be where all the adults were. And so now you've got, and some of the adults, and you know, we're not going to watch it 24 hours a day, so now you got to make some real serious choices. So what we did is we brainstormed, because I forced them to brainstorm. I says, well, I want this in writing that she's not going to be hurt. I didn't come all this way to have her fall out of bed. And you know she's going to fall out of bed. He said, yeah, I know she's going to fall out of bed, but we don't know what to do. So what we did is we harnessed her. We, 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 we harnessed, doubled harnessed her, and then harnessed the harness to the bed, which worked. It's not the best thing, but it worked. Then I came, I mean, the whole hospital stay at Kaiser was very positive when it came to therapy because the people were beautiful. They knew exactly how to deal with traumatic brain injury. And so I had a real firsthand experience on people don't know about brain injury and people do know about brain injury. It's like really awesome. It's, it, it's really, really fantastic to to be able to see both sides of the thing as you're going through. So now we're working with the speech therapist and we're trying to get Odie to eat. And Odie refused to eat. So I remember that Odie just loves poi. She just really, really loves poi. So since we were in a bind, she wouldn't eat chocolate pudding. She wouldn't eat this. She wouldn't eat that. It's consistency, right? So what we did is we flew my, my, my sister-in-law and my mom, we flew poi in and we kept it in the freezer and we just dissolved a little bit of it daily. So luckily Kaiser was, um, um, they bought into the idea of, and soon as Odie, t soon as Odie tasted the poi, because what they were going to do is they were going to send her home with the tubes in and we would just have to learn to feed her that way. The yeah, the nays, yeah. And so, and I was like ter terrified to do that, but that would be our only choice if we couldn't get her within the 45 days to um, start to learn to eat. So we brought, we, we brought in the poi, and once we brought in the poi, we could mix the poi with whatever we wanted. <laughs> She'd eat poi with everything. And so we were able to remove the tubing before we, we transferred it. Be and that was a real biggie. Mm -hmm. That was a real biggie. Because once she started eating the poi consistency, we could thin it out. And we could get liquids down. That's like totally awesome, you know. Yes, I did. Oh, and Leah, I 